This giant mass of rock conceals an awesome 1500 year old stronghold that's still inhabited today. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to ring the bell for more. From the mainland the island appears to be little more than a hulking mass of rock barren but for a thin cloak of wiry brush. However hidden from view on its seaward side and beyond a mysterious spike door in a fortified wall is an L-shaped tunnel that leads to an ancient town. Once called a ship of stone by the popular Greek poet Yanis Ritsos, the island is located in the Aegean Sea off the southeast coast of the Peloponnese, a large four-fingered peninsula in southern Greece. And though it may appear to be lifeless, this island has actually been continuously inhabited for around 1500 years. Formerly part of the mainland, the island was forged by an earthquake in 375 AD. With a rocky tabletop plateau at its peak, its sheer walls climb to a height of around 330 feet, offering a commanding vantage point. Its width is just under a thousand feet wide, while its length is around 3300 feet. But despite its diminutive proportions, the seemingly desolate isle once supported a 40,000 strong population. Its hidden town cascades down its slopes with sand colored structures that blend almost imperceptibly into the rock. Moreover, centuries of shifting imperial influence are reflected in their architecture. Today, the island is home to just 12 permanent residents. By contrast, the modern village of Gefria on the mainland, which is connected to the island by a causeway built in 1971, is a growing tourism hub. Year by year, too, this little island off the Peloponnese is gaining international acclaim. Sometimes known as the Gibraltar of the East, the island is believed to have been settled in 583 by refugees fleeing Slavic and Iberic marauders. Its name is Manumvesia, which means single entrance. In the past, thanks to its unique defensive properties, it could only be accessed by a drawbridge or by wading through water. The town's earliest structures were erected on the summit of the rock and formed part of the now abandoned upper town. At the highest point of the island, meanwhile, stands the crumbling 12th century Byzantine church of Agia Sophia complete with marble reliefs. Over the centuries, the town expanded down the hillside to nestle in an enclave by the water. Starting in the 10th century, Manum Vesia successfully evolved into a major city and prized Byzantine trade hub, its port receiving ships from Constantinople and other thriving medieval cities. This was, arguably, the town's golden age. For centuries, Manum Vesia thrived under Byzantine rule. Indeed, the town was so well defended that it did not crumble under Arab and Norman invasion attempts in 1147. However, in the end, it could not resist the forces of history. In later years, it succumbed, respectively, to Vatican, Frank, Venetian, and Ottoman control. By the end of the 18th century, Manum Vesia had all but faded as a great trade center. It remained part of the Ottoman Empire until 1821, when it was liberated during the Greek War of Independence. Sadly, the Nazi occupation of World War II and the ensuing Greek Civil War caused the island's population to plummet. The town lay largely ruined for decades, but then starting in 1967, a couple called Alexandros and Haris Kaligas began restoring its historic properties. So far, they've resurrected half of Manum Vesia's 160 structures, which in 1980 earned them a Europa Nostra cultural medal. Today, Manum Vesia is being rediscovered by international travelers. Starting with Orthodox Easter in the spring, the tourist season pulls crowds as late as October. Fortunately, they hardly detract from the island's ambience. As Lonely Planet wrote, the extraordinarily visual impact of the medieval village and the delights of exploring it override the effects of mass tourism in the summer. Punctuated with a warren of cobblestone streets and stairways, the island's achingly romantic lower town focuses on a central square and the 13th century cathedral of Christos Alcamenos. Nearby, the striking dome basilica of the Virgin Mirto Diostisa was built in the 17th century during the Venetian occupation. Beyond the main square, rambling through stone archways and past blazing patches of flowering bougainvillea, the lower town meets the water and an ancient seawall. Meanwhile, beyond the eastern gate at the perimeter, a 19th century lighthouse overlooks the Aegean from a rocky cliff edge. Naturally, the lower town features a handful of traditional taverns serving ouzo and fresh seafood in good measure. Some of the fine medieval residences here 
have in fact also been converted into swanky boutique hotels Unsurprisingly the island is a popular wedding destination However, the island also appeals to families and solo travelers thanks to the activities on offer These include sea kayaking swimming diving wine tasting and cooking to name a few There are rocky beaches too, but adventurous and athletic travelers may first want to explore the islands upper town Its ruins are reached from the main square via a path that leads to the summit of the island once upon a time some 500 mansions overlooked the sea from this clifftop perch a former enclave for the town's wealthy aristocrats Today however little remains of the upper town still the views are immense and with enough imagination You can almost see the merchant ships anchored offshore sails illuminated by the setting Sun Having witnessed centuries of drama and change Madame Veja claims an almost mythical grandeur and as its reputation spreads this tiny rock of an island is sure to see many more travelers Fortunately its development so far has been sensitive to its historical integrity and there's no sign of that changing with any luck Mon Veja will still be intact and inhabited 1500 years from now We can't change Mon Veja. It would ruin everything 93 year old Matula Rizzos told the New York Times We weren't supposed to last here in isolation and cut into a cliff of rock, but here we are hundreds of years later here we still are.